it's impossible to determine the time and cause of death without opening her up. But one thing's for sure, she was brutalized. Hmm. A lot of metal in here. As you can see, the main drive section blew. The customer actually told me that his bolts came loose holding the transmission to the bell housing, and that's why this happened. Rarely happens on these transmissions. I very rarely see the main drive section actually break. But the beauty of it, it's modular, so we just have to change these two gears in the front, clean it up, put it back together. Okay, so what you got here, if you look at the front of this main shaft, this is the pilot tip where the needle bearings go, and you can see that they're pitted. What that means is that the input shaft and output shaft were trying to get run at an angle. They weren't totally straight with one another. This is a good example of what happens when the bell housing is not lined up correctly. Now again, the customer did say his transmission came loose within his bell housing, which could cause this, but I think that his bell housing needs to be dialed in. And that is why this thing failed. Okay, so here you have both the input shaft and the matching section on the counter gear. And you can see they're pretty torn up, which is obviously because of the alignment issue. This thing was kind of cocked running like this, okay? And that's why it blew up, which also is why that main shaft was worn in the front. It also did some damage to the case. Okay, so here we have a Chrysler AA33 transmission. This is one of these 18 spline Hemi transmissions. Also suffer from a misalignment problem. As you can see here, the tip of the main shaft broke because it was actually a modified tip by Liberties, but it was wiggling up and down so much that the weld worked hard and then the whole tip snapped and came apart. You can also see over here that it has heat checking from it rubbing against the inside of the input shaft because the whole input shaft was kind of wobbling around like this because it was no longer held concentric with the crank center line. So I'm going to take this one apart too and see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so since I got this thing apart, I'd like to show you a few things. First of all, because you have needle bearings inside this input shaft, like this, I don't know if you can see those needles there, uh, they fit on this main shaft tip like this, okay? So when you have a misalignment issue where this is kind of moving it like this, exa I'm exaggerating it right now, you put a side load on the needles and that's what causes you to chew up the tip of the main shaft. But I thought this was a good opportunity since this is a face plated transmission you could see how it works and it's got a partial synchronizer ring over here on first gear. So what happens is in a normal synchronizer ring over here you have a bronze ring typically this is a Chrysler AA33 to 4 top loader Muncie 4 speed they all have 36 teeth over here 36 clutch teeth. So you have a slider that has 36 teeth and it has to mate with these 36 teeth at a very high speed the window is very small. It goes like that. So when this is spinning like that, it has to kind of synchronize and then lock to these 36 teeth. So you have 36 teeth mating with 36 teeth. If you remove the teeth and you make a huge window like this over here, this has got seven lugs on it basically. They call it face plating. Then what happens is you effectively slow down the surface speed so you make the window easier to get in at high RPMs. So it's got no rings, and so you get this kind of backlash like this. If you're in gear and you go on and off the gear, the gas, the gear is going to make this kind of slapping noise, and it could wear out the lugs. But in drag racing or something where you're just on the gas one way, or even in road racing where there's a high load on it, it's acceptable. So it's basically, it just shifts in like that, and that's kind of what face plating does. It's a huge air gap that allows you to get it in gear at higher RPMs. So on this particular setup, it's just kind of like that. It just kind of goes in. It's not really a crash box. This is a, basically what face plating is. It's just shifting it in gear like this, like that. Very simple. See, so again, that's a face plated gear set. Synchronizing, the ring has to grab the gear first and then lock it in gear, but it has to mate with these 36 little teeth here. Whereas this face plate, again, the lug has a huge air gap and allows it to go in gear much quicker.
downside is that these teeth get beat up over a period of time because of this action when you're accelerating and decelerating in the gear. If you also notice the way it's kind of got this angle to it, it's kind of back cut, so it pulls itself into gear. On the load, it's not going to try to pull itself and walk itself out of gear. That's what this little angle is over here for. It's kind of shaped like a little hat, but with a taper to it. See how the face plates look? Pretty neat, huh? This is a mod by Liberties where they actually weld the face plate onto the gear. You can see they did a very good job. Needle bearings appear to be okay. In other words, the tip of the main shaft didn't get chewed up or anything because of the misalignment. So what I'm going to do simply with this one is get this input shaft replaced. Get this whole input shaft replaced because the tip is messed up on it. Uh, and then uh, put the box back together.